The way I fixed the uh, mirror image problem that I had was by moving the y-axis connector from this plug this socket to this one. Luckily this controller can cater for a CNC machine where either the gantry moves or the bed moves. When you have one like my X-Car where the gantry moves you need two motors uh, one each side of the gantry to make sure it moves properly. Um, where, the where the bed moves then you really only need one motor. Um, but And so it's low. I used the wrong one to start with but when I put the other side everything worked fine. Okay guys, uh, so my findings or summary of findings on about dimming a laser and uh, dynamic laser intensity control seems it's kind of clever the way they do it. Uh, within G-code they use the parameters for spindle speed because you can vary obviously the spindle speed and GNC, uh, CNC um, between, and the, the, the S values in G-code between 0 and 255. That then is used to generate <coughs> a voltage between 0 volt and 5 volt so hence they call it TTL control since these are historically the TTL voltages for 0 and 1 this then so this lot here is done in the controller this then goes to the um, I guess what I'll call it the, the laser interface board <laughs> so uh, and this what this does is it takes this 0 volts and 5 volts is variable DC input and it creates a pulse width modulated signal of the 12 volts on the output side going off to the laser so if the uh, pulses are at the minimum I'm sorry at the narrowest you'll have pretty much 0 volts and if the pulses are at their widest you'll have 12 volts going to the laser and so uh, that's all pretty neat so uh, there's no immediate TTL out from this controller and so uh, you could probably set it up but hence uh, this controller has three outputs here it has the original uh, 12 volt output to the laser it has a fixed 12 volt out to the uh, to the fan to the cooling fan and it has the TTL signal and so over here on this little board which came with the laser device originally all that they did was with the previous controller is they just had a pulsed 12 volts going in here and that should be a static 12 volt supply for the board um, because that 12 volts input here and the one over here for the fan are just connected together so 12 volts in here 12 volts out there and off to the fan and so now the fan turns <laughs> And then over here we have the TTL input signal which causes this guy here to turn the PWM signal and then over there at the back we have the output which goes off to the laser. And so yeah, it took a little bit of reading up to figure it all out but I do believe we have it figured out. Uh, a couple of things, uh, I'm not sure if the laser uh, light has a negative impact on the camera lens or the camera sensor or anything. So what I might do is put the uh, filter in front of the camera lens when I do it. Um, the other thing is I saw from another user that the uh, the green glasses that come with the kit, uh, while they may be meet the bare bare minimum, they're far from being the safest. Um, and so I went researching that lot. My local supplier had these glasses, which are much much better but they're not very practical because you can't wear them if you have to wear prescription glasses which I do and so you can't they fit perfectly if you didn't have to wear glasses <laughs> um, but these are way better um, so you can look at the if you like the laser um, as it's pr as it's burning or engraving without any eye strain whereas with the green ones certainly for me uh, it's it's still pretty glary and uh, since I already have one weak eye I get really hyper paranoid about anything happening to the one good one um, so uh, these work much better um, 
But then I went online to find the source of, you know, proper ANSI certified uh, laser protective gear and so on. And so I've ordered up a pucker set that I can wear over my glasses uh, so I don't have to worry about it anymore. But they are a tad expensive. And so maybe I'll show you those when they get here. Interestingly, when I ordered them up, I got a reply from the um, supplier uh, who's in Germany saying, um, these these devices are the subject of US export control. So can you please fill in all this information about who you are and what you're using them for before we can process your order? <laughs> so <laughs> I guess they figured if you were getting glasses, you'd be using something a little bit more powerful than this little toy here. Um, but anyway, so that's that. So I feel a lot more comfortable now. Um, the other thing I noticed was if I wear the green glasses for any length of time, when I take them off, Everything looks red, <laughs> which is weird. Uh, for some reason, this doesn't seem to be problematic. I can wear these for a while and when I take them off, everything still looks okay. Uh, so yeah, the green ones are not for me, that's for sure. So there we go, I'm pretty pleased with that, it's nice and clean. I mean it's a bitmap image that I rastered so it's not uh, entirely fully anti-aliased or whatever, but it's pretty clear, pretty good. Ah yes, we're gonna have great fun with this. <laughs> so I think we'll call this a wrap guys at this stage, I'm pretty pleased with the outcome at this point. And uh, look forward to uh, spending lots of time messing around, enjoying engraving things on this. I have a couple of little projects in mind for it already. So yeah, thanks for following along. I hope you found it useful. I certainly learned a lot. Everything from flashing Arduino nanos to the whole process of how G-code is used to vary the laser intensity and all that stuff. And finally how to wire the thing up properly. So there we go guys, that's it for now. Um, if I succeed in getting the other original controller upgraded to the latest firmware, I might pop a little quick update on that as well, just out of interest. Um, Alright guys, more to come. Cheers for now, bye!